from WFSB, this is an Eyewitness News update. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Thursday, August 17th. I'm Nicole Nalep, and let's get you caught up on today's top headlines. First up in New London, crews are battling a fire right now on Bond Street, and we're told that that is actually the location where they're fighting the fire is where the Muddy Waters Cafe is located. So police tell us the scene is still pretty active right now, and we will be sure to keep you updated as soon as we learn more about that investigation. And now as you take a look at your screen, you're seeing video from this next story, which is quite disturbing in New Haven. Police are investigating another Yale break in. The latest one we're learning about happened on July 23rd when a student woke up to an unknown man inside of their bedroom. Fortunately, no one was hurt in that confrontation and the man left without issue. But this is the third time that an incident like this has happened on campus since the spring semester ended. New Haven police are just reminding all students to lock their doors and their windows and to come forward with any information about the string of break ins. So if you know anything about the latest incident, please give police a call. Also in New Haven, we're staying there with this next story where we're learning that police are asking for the public's help this morning after someone shot a DoorDash delivery driver. Now our pinpoint news tracker shows you exactly where this all took place. Police say that the suspect tried to steal a car on Ferry Street right before the shooting. Fortunately, the victim survived, but police are still trying to track down the criminal. Also in New Haven, two people, including a minor, are facing charges after police say they went on an armed robbery spree. Investigators say Christian De Leon and an accomplice robbed three stores at gunpoint yesterday morning. Police eventually caught up with them in a stolen car on Middletown Avenue. And in Manchester, a building right in the East Meadow condo complex has been deemed safe by the fire marshal and building inspector after its facade fell last night, damaging several cars and even sending a firefighter to the hospital with an ankle injury. This happened around 730 last night and forced officials to evacuate the building. Luckily, no one who lives there was hurt, and this morning we are working to learn how this all could have happened. Scott, over to you. Scott, it's shoreline uh, showers and inland showers. Uh, if you take a look right over the New York border, so you'll see them over the shoreline down to our south. And again, right up against the New York border, Millbrook, uh, New York, that's all moving in our direction. It's very light. It's very insignificant, but I do want to bring it to your attention. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Temperatures today, yeah, maybe a little bit of limited sunshine later on this afternoon. We could top out in the low 80s if we do get that sunshine. Mm, close to 80 degrees for the shoreline. The clouds hang tough, but we are expecting still some limited sunshine there as well. So today, not the best day, not the worst day. Tomorrow looks a little rough. This is level one in terms of severe weather. We could have some strong storms tomorrow morning, particularly after six, seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, that's when the action rolls in. And in terms of excessive rain, we're also at level one. We don't need any more rain around here, and it looks like we're going to get some. 79 degrees yesterday. We didn't have any rain in the state, and that's some good news. And not a bad looking skyline right now in Old Saybrook. A little bit of blue popping up there as the sun is now up in the six o'clock hour. Torrington, good morning to you. Mostly overcast conditions. More clouds than anything else in New Haven, about 10 degrees above average there. And we'll take a look at New London. People getting ready for another busy day on the Cross Sound Ferry. 70 degrees down in New London. Let's take a look at early morning future cast. It's tomorrow's weather today. Again, we dot the landscape with a couple of greens, nothing too substantial. And then uh, tonight, mostly cloudy skies. After midnight, showers and thunderstorms storms start developing again, particularly tomorrow morning. This is right around eight o'clock tomorrow morning. This is nine o'clock tomorrow morning. You'll see them uh, and then by 12 o'clock, they're still in northeast and southeast Connecticut, but then they wind down a northwesterly flow can kicks in and we're going to get some drier air around here, which is some good news. Temperatures uh, starting off this morning in the mid to upper 60s. You've got 65 for Torrington, 68 for Bradley, 69 for Brainerd, 71 for New Haven. Mild start and it's muggy and there's even a touch of fog out there in parts of the state. The winds are calm, so that's some good news. And the dew points, unfortunately, are rivaling those temperatures, which means the relative humidity is about 100%. Muggy, a little bit of mist coming down in parts of the state this morning. Some sun later on this afternoon. Some sun, not a lot. And then there could even be a pop-up shower, so grab an umbrella, throw it in the back seat of your car. Rather to have it, rather to be safe than sorry, as I always say. Today, it's Thursday. It's August 17th. 17th. 79 to 83 is the spread. Cloudy start with some sun later on this afternoon. Temperatures will top out 
in the low 80s. Uh, sun is up at 601. Sun sets at 748. Your seven day forecast includes storms tomorrow morning, giving you the early warning that we are expecting storms tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon, gradual clearing with a northwesterly flow. The humidity comes down, as do the temperatures for Saturday. Might have to add a couple of clouds to Saturday's forecast. I'll wait to see what happens with the model runs. Sunday, mostly sunny, 85. The weekend looks good. Uh, hard, no chance for any precipitation, which is such good news. We have a nice dry weekend with partly to mostly sunny skies Saturday, mostly sunny skies Sunday, and that nice weather continues into Monday. Might see an increase in cloud coverage Monday night into early Tuesday morning with more showers, but we'll just have to wait and see how that all plays out. All right, that's a check of your early morning forecast. Nicole, we'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Scott. It is now 7.05. Two murder suspects are in custody right now, accused of killing a teenager in cold blood, and another arrest could be on the horizon. 26-year-old Ronald Scott and 23-year-old James Davis both faced charges this morning after police say they shot 17-year-old Maki Mazon in the chest last month right on Newport Drive. Mazon died a week later in the hospital. And investigators tell us that they are still trying to piece together what exactly led up to the violence. They also say that they do expect to make another arrest. There's also a push for peace in Hartford this morning, right in the middle of a surge of deadly shootings. So far this year, there have already been 28 homicides in Hartford, and eight of those crimes have happened just in the last two weeks. The Greater Hartford NAACP has responded by starting a new program at Unity Plaza right on Barber Street. And the plan is to help connect neighbors with resources such as food banks and violence prevention efforts. So if you want to check it out, the program will take place every Wednesday at Unity Plaza. Again, that's in Hartford. And moving on now to stores where Yukon is getting some heat this morning. State auditors found that two employees on the school's sabbatical leave program were actually overpaid by hundreds of thousands of dollars. Can you imagine? Well, we found out that UConn also couldn't recoup a $300,000 loss from four faculty members who didn't come back to work after their sabbaticals. The report says that the university did not follow its own policy and that the school plans to overhaul the sabbatical approval process for faculty members. And the town of Bristol is moving forward with plans to build a memorial honoring police officers who have died in the line of duty. The local leaders say that they need your help to get it done. Five officers will be honored, including Sergeant Alex Hamsey and Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte, who were killed in the line of duty 10 months ago. Now, donations to help build the memorial can be made to the Main Street Community Foundation. The organization is hoping to raise $300,000 for that project. And we just want to give you a little bit of a heads up about the latest West Nile virus developments here in our state. Health officials say that Waterbury is the latest city to see mosquitoes test positive for that virus. 15 communities around Connecticut have now detected the virus, which is up from nine last week. Fortunately, no cases have been found in humans, but health officials are just warning to keep to make sure that you are applying that bug repellent and that you're wearing long sleeved clothing to protect yourself from those bites that you don't want to get. Thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News on this Friday Eve. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on that Channel 3 app. Have a great day, everyone. Be healthy. Stay positive.